Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to the Friday video where I get to do pretty much anything I want and uh, today I'm actually tackling sliding number. Really simple sliding number, looks clean and uh, it's just working good. So if you, have, if you have a look over here on the left side, we have our game screen, we have a simple nice canvas and um, these buttons over here, they're pretty much events I can put on my text. Now I'll do a plus one, as you can tell we gain one, I do a plus 100, we went up to 100. Minus 100 also works, and let's do a set to 300. And that's really it, so that's what we're going to be doing today, guys, and without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so as always, let me present you what we have right now. Just a simple scene with a little piece of UI on it. We have um, four different buttons, and also a count up here. So we got five items here, four of them are buttons. This one is called plus one, plus 100, minus 100, then set to 300. And over here we have what is going to be the count, so we're going to be typing in a number in here. And uh, what these buttons are going to do is add to that number, or subtract, or set it. So let's get right into it. I'm going to create a new script that I'll call a sliding number. And we're simply going to open it up inside of um, Visual Studio. Now, of course, you can be opening this in Modo Develop if you're still using that. I'm, I'm done using Modo Develop. I'm using uh, Visual Studio now because you guys use it more. Okay, so this doesn't really have to be on any object, it could be on the camera. What we're gonna do is actually have a reference to that text by adding Unity Engine.ui and then we'll go up here, do a public text, and this is going to be the number text. I think it's going to be pretty much the only public field we're going to have. Well, no, let's actually add a new one public float animation time as well and we're gonna put that on say 1.5 so it's gonna take 1.5 second to complete your animation like I said we're gonna be putting it pretty much anywhere you want really I could be putting it on the camera if you wish so let me just do that right here I'm going to take my sliding number and put it right here on the camera object now what I need to do is take the text that is going to be modified in this case this text and put it in the field here now with that done, we should be ready to go to go ahead and just code a little bit. So we're gonna be keep, we're gonna be keeping track of um, four different float. The first float is going to be the desired number. The next one is going to be the initial number, the current number, and the transition float. Or you know what? We're not gonna be using a transition. Never mind that. We only need these three float, and um. If that's too confusing, let's put them on different lines. Doesn't really matter at this point. Okay. Now that we've got these, we're going to be playing around with these three values. And uh, the way I want to be setting this number um, through code is by having public function that I'll be calling from outside. In this case, I'll be calling them from buttons, but you could be calling them from uh, when you pick up an item, then you get the sliding number component, and then you do a function that we're about to write right now. So we're going to create two simple functions, the first one being set number, and then we'll have the float value, and also another one, let's do a public void add to number, or add to value, I'm not quite sure what's the proper word here. I'm not a native English speaker, but doesn't really matter, you get the point. So let's do, if we do a get component on this object from somewhere else, we do a get component dot set number or get component dot add to number. That's how we're going to be modifying this value. Now in the set number, all I want to do is take the initial amount, so the initial number, and then do is equal to current number. And then I'll do desired number is equal to value, the one I get right here. For the add to number, I'll do the exact same thing. So initial number is equal to current number. However, the desired number is going to be plus equal to value this time, not just equal. And that's really all we need for these two fields. So that that is really simple. And I'll just leave them open in case you need to copy this. Okay, now this is where the complicated part happens we're gonna be doing um, most of our logic in the update 
actually all our logic we're going to be doing it in the update so let's think a little bit about what we need here we have this number um, that we set from outside using these two functions and uh, we need to actually make it scroll not really scroll but slide from one initial number to the desired number so let's do if current number is not equal to desired number in that case if it's not equal that means uh, we have a we have you know like a margin we have some kind of delay on the number so we need to move it and then we're gonna check is that number supposed to be bigger or smaller so if initial number is smaller than the desired amount then we need to increment the initial number we need to increment the current number so we'll do current number plus equal animation time which is 1.5 in our case time time the delta time to just make sure that uh, we get 1.5 after one second one real second and then we do times desired number minus initial number and I'll just go in full screen so we get something of the sort now so we increment the number but what's going to happen is um, you know depending on the speed at which we scroll that number we might go beyond it we might go above it so say we do a plus a hundred we might end up with a current number that is at a hundred and one or a hundred and two so let's actually clamp it right here we're gonna do if current number is bigger or equal to desired number in that case current number is equal to desired number and if we just go a little bit below now we're gonna be doing the L statement so we've done this this technically should work and um, in the L statement we're gonna be doing the same thing but if the initial number is bigger than the desired one which means we're starting from a uh, say a hundred and we're going down to 50 so we're losing numbers basically we're, we're losing value so we're also um, considering that so current number and this time it's minus equal animation time time delta time times and then we have to swap these around this time so initial number minus desired number and we can go ahead and just do the same exact check but the other way around so minus equal desired number and if that's the case then we make it equal to the value so we're pretty much just playing with our number here we're just having fun with our number uh, making it go up or down we have three values to keep track of that but then all we gotta do to make make sure this actually shows in the game is to modify the text itself so number text dot text is going to equal current number to string just like that but now since we're using float values we're gonna have a small bug and um, you'll see in a moment I'll just start by um, plugging my buttons because right now I have my script which is right here on the main camera but my button they don't know what to call and this is where we connect to the sliding number component this component so I'll do it um, via this button here so uh, the plus one I'll add the unclick event drag and drop my main camera in here find my sliding number script and then do a add to number in this case because we've got a plus one so we're adding one same thing in the plus a hundred so I'll just grab my main camera again sliding number and we'll do add to number we're adding a hundred this time one more time for the minus a hundred so we just put a minus in front and finally the set this is a different function set number we're setting it to 300 okay so our reference is set we're pointing towards that text so here the count text and we're gonna go ahead and just press play now say we press on one it takes one second to go to one press on plus a hundred as you can tell it, it just it works but it's really ugly because we get to see the decimal and that's really something not cool and uh, let's try the other way around too so minus a hundred that seemed to work as well but um, our problem is really the fact that we see the decimal now there is something really cool with the two string function is that you can overload it and give it some kind of formatting style 
And the way you do this is if you only want, if you don't want to have any decimal, you just do zero. So you send a string with zero. And now there's multiple string you could send to have different um, kind of formatting, but this one works super good. So as you can tell, playing with that number now, it's pretty easy and it works flawlessly. But if you want to have like at least one decimal, you can type in dot zero again. And this way you should have a number that always looks like that. So if we go back in the game and we do say plus a hundred, you're always going to have one decimal. So that could be pretty cool too if you're looking for that. And guys, that is pretty much it for today's episode. It was a really short one, but we covered a sliding number because, you know, it's Friday and I get to do whatever I want. Alright guys, I hope you enjoy, I hope you like, and if you did, please leave me a like on the video. That would be really cool. And uh, other than that, please check out the Patreon page if you wish to actually pledge. That would also be very cool. And guys, comment in the comment section below. All that kind of jazz that I keep saying over and over again. Anyway, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.